Hi, my name is Jason Nikoff, and I'm an associate professor at Tennessee State University. Today I'm going to be talking about the composting process, and we're going to talk about some of the uh, different ways that you can compost and try to alleviate any sort of concerns or misconceptions about composting. So composting is really nice because it can help to keep food waste out of the landfill. Currently, uh, a large portion or, or the majority of the material that's ending up in the landfill is from food waste. And we also usually end up throwing away about 40% of our food. So if we're able to keep that waste out of the landfill and we're also able to create a useful product that's beneficial for our gardens and our, our lawns, then that's a win-win for everyone. So to start off with, I'm going to talk about the, the compost pile. Basically, you can, you can do two different things. You can have a bin, which is essentially a, a barrel with a crank on it, and all you have to do is turn that crank and that turns the compost. That's something that's available online, you can purchase it, and it helps to reduce the, the overall labor involved in the composting process. Another possibility is to just create your own compost pile, and you can do that anywhere in, in your yard. Uh, basically, you have to have uh, dimensions between uh, at least three feet by three feet in area. And what that does is it helps to insulate the, the compost pile and helps to uh, allow it to heat up sufficiently so it can decom decompose the organic material. So with something like that, you're going to want to have some boundaries for it. And this is a good example where basically you use some chicken wire and some wooden stakes and you can create some fencing to go around that compost pile. And this is something that's available through the Tennessee Environmental Council as well. So when, when it comes to what to put in the compost pile, we've got essentially two different types of material. We've got our brown material, which is going to be high in carbon, and then we've got our green material, which is high in nitrogen. And these are both nutrients that the microbes need in order to survive. Essentially, when we're doing composting, we're basically trying to feed those microbes as best as we can so that they're going to break down and degrade that organic matter as quickly as possible. So what are green and brown materials? So I've got some examples here. If you look uh, over on my left, we've got uh, a number of different types of, of food waste materials. And essentially, uh, the majority of your food waste is going to be considered those, those green materials. So we've got some examples, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, bananas and we've got some eggshells we've got some some celery you know anything that basically you 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 know you don't need anymore maybe it's gone bad um, that's something that you can put in the in the compost pile even the the lunch that I didn't finish yesterday I've got some tortilla chips I've got some wheat bread this is all material that can be added to the compost as well to keep it from entering the landfill also, uh, tea bags and coffee are, are also good. They're a green, uh, green material that we can add. Um, when it comes to the food waste, we want to try to avoid any sort of meat products or dairy products. So um, in addition to some of these food wastes, we could also use uh, fresh green clippings. So something like from grass. We've also got an example, you know, any sort of clippings that you have from trees or bushes that are still green. Those are gonna count as nitrogen or as a, as a green material for the compost. And then also we've got uh, manure that can be used. And so we recommend not using cat, uh, dog, or human manure, but any other kind of manure is a really good source of, of that green nitrogen material. So when you are uh, collecting your, your kitchen, kitchen scraps, a good way to do that is to use some kind of a, a container system like this. You can, you can keep the material in the container, and then once it gets full, you can add it to the compost pile. And these containers are also available through the Tennessee Environmental Council. Uh, a lot of times, I usually recommend adding maybe some sawdust or some kind of absorbent material, and that's gonna absorb any moisture and help to reduce any odors that you might have. So, when we talk about our carbon material, uh, or our brown material, we can look at a number of different things. We can look at yard waste once again. We've got some, some nice brown leaves here. Also, uh, if you've got some gr uh, brown grass clippings, that's another source of carbon. Uh, any sort of paper products. So we've got uh, you know, our, our you know, paper egg cartons. We've got any sort of cardboard material, um, shredded paper. That's gonna be uh, useful in the, in the compost. 
Uh, you want to try to make sure that it's that it's broken down a little bit, that it's torn apart, and that's going to help the, the microbes break that down a little bit faster. One thing that's really important for the microbes is moisture. And so if you don't have enough moisture, obviously you can add more water. If you have too much moisture, what you can do is you can uh, turn the pile a lot more often than you have been, and that'll help to evaporate a lot of that excess moisture. And then once it's complete, it's going to look something like this. We've got an example here, and what you want to look for is this nice dark brown uh, granular type of material and uh, a lot of people associate it with you know something like chocolate cake the texture of, of, of chocolate cake also you really don't want to be able to tell um, what the material came from you don't want to be able to say oh that's an orange peel or that was a banana peel it should be you know pretty um, pretty difficult to identify those kinds of materials take your your kitchen scraps and you put them in you're collecting them in the kitchen and then once you've got enough you're going to add that to your browns and so this is the uh, the dump and layer type of method and you mix that all together and you're turning it and adding water and all that good stuff and uh, you uh, you end up with the, the compost at the end easy as that so then once your compost is complete uh, you're you're ready to go and you can add that to your garden or your lawn or your trees or shrubs this